Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be part five of my makeup inventory and collection series, and this is going to be everything blush. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. In today's video, as you can see, we're featuring blushes, and I have already announced several times when I was doing these videos throughout the week that I'm doing this at the moment to sort of prepare myself for my decluttering series, do some comparative swatches to really be able to make up my mind what I have going on, are there things that I feel that I can get rid of or not, so that when I get to my declutters, everything goes a little bit more seamlessly. So that's what we're, where we're coming on, um, where we're coming from with this video today. And in case you're unfamiliar with my content, it may be good to know that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, which greatly skews my makeup preferences. And because I've been buying, trying and reviewing makeup for more than a decade, I also have some very strong favorites. So if you'd like to join the Snow Angel Club, all you need to do is click the subscribe button down below. <laughs> So yes, blushes. I've got my creamy sort of liquidy formulas over on this side. These are all powder blushes and face palettes because I didn't feature those yet, but all of the face palettes I have also have blushes in. So it made more sense for me to show them in this video for you. And this video I wanna organize a little bit differently than the previous ones you may have seen going up this week. Um, because I want to go over this according to like colors. So rather than going by brand or like one big overview, I'm going to split, especially the um, powder blushes, I'm going to split them into their given color family so I can also really see the differences and nuances between all of my peachy blushes, for instance. So I'm going to clear the deck so we can start with face palettes first because I don't have that many. Then we'll do the creams and liquids and then we'll get to the powder blushes separated into color categories. Welcome to all of my face palettes. And some of these are just like, you know, this Patrick Ta one where uh, we get, how does this open? We get the cream and the blush, but I think of this as a blush palette really. And then I have just some other things. And like I mentioned, all of these have blush in them, but I will be swatching every shade that we get in here. So let's start at the top. This is the Wayne Goss Blush Duo. It's, their, it's his Weightless Veil Blush Palette in Vivid Azalea. Um, and then we have two shades in here, which is this really bright vivid magenta shade and this white to gold highlighter. So I love these. I especially like the blush because that it's like pink with red, but also a very strong bluey purple undertone, but without it going Barbie pink. It's really pretty for that like fresh in from the cold kind of look. So this is what the blush looks like. And as vibrant as it looks in the pan, that's how easy this is to sheer out. That's how easy this is to sheer out. You do need to work with it quite quickly. And then there is the highlighter in this palette. And then I have my two Natasha Denona palettes. So I got these off of a deal on Beautylish where these were essentially buy one, get one free. So this is the Love Glow Cheek Palette. And this is the Bronze Cheek Palette. This is better, this way you can actually see it. Um, so this is of course, both creams and powders into a palette. And I really need to combine both to get a full cheek look with this because this doesn't have a bronzer shade for me. And this doesn't have a blush shade for me. So that's a bit of a shame. These are both of them really, really stunning. And when I had to travel a bit more for work, I would take these with me and um, pretty much had a full face um, in these two palettes. I would even use these as eyeshadow and it worked really well. So I, um, I do really like the formulas in here. Now that I have a different job for which I don't need to travel, I'm not sure whether I still need to keep these though. Do they still serve a purpose? But yeah, they're nice, they're not expired. So let me swatch out the Love Glow for you. So this does feel like a powder, even though it's under the flap, the Super Glow one. This is my favorite. And then we get that highlighter shade, which is a little bit too deep for me, I'm not gonna lie, but there is a good highlighter in this one. So here we have that cream, that first sort of super glow. This is the diamond powder, and then we get that highlighter. So this is what those four shades look like. And then the bronze cheek, we have 
this is actual more like a highlighter for me, but it is that cream to powder sort of formula, which I do like. And then this is a blush according to them, but on me, this is a bit too dark. So I use that as a cream bronzer, actually. This is the one shade in both of these palettes that I really can't wear unless I wear it as eyeshadow because for my cheeks, that doesn't work, but this is a really pretty powder as well. Like in the end, these worked so much better than I had anticipated when I bought these. I just wanted to try some more Natasha Denona at the time. So that's why I got both of these. So yeah, that highlighter. I mean, it's really, really pretty. And then we have these guys left. So let me let me continue on with the high-end stuff. This is the Patrick Ta, um, what's this called? The Double Take Cream and Powder Blush. This is in the shade She's Vibrant. Now I believe this is one of the shades that used to only come in a limited edition face palette, but then he did release those creams and powders as single products. And I last year really wanted to try some more Patrick Ta. This is something I haven't reviewed yet, but we all know how much I love, you'll see when we get to my cream blushes, but I love these very vibrant shades for cream blush. Not so much as a powder blush, but this is the only thing in his entire line that seemed like it could work for me because everything in his line is so incredibly warm toned that it doesn't really work for me. But yeah, this, like this is a cream blush on my complexion, is gorgeous if I use a light hand. And if you would like to know how I apply cream blush, I did post a um, short with that. So if you wanna see my technique for making sure I apply my cream blush in a natural way, then you can. So yeah, that's the Patrick Ta. It's the only shade that really appeals from, uh, to me from his entire line. And then we have Dior. This is the Backstage Glow Face Palette in the shade Universal. This is another one of those great for travel kind of palettes. I actually like combining these two for my bronzer shade because I find that this is too light, this is a bit too deep, but together they make for a great shade. And then this is this is my highlighter and this is my blush. So let me show you these. There we go. So here's the highlighter, blush, bronzer number one, bronzer number two. At least on me it's a bronzer. Like I'm sure that this could I'm sure that this could be a highlighter for some people, but for me, that's more of a bronzer shade. And look at that glow. I really like this one. And then this is the Twinkle Pop Face Flash Palette. I don't remember, oh, it's in O Pinkful. And this was a PR thing, and it was really difficult to open. And I can't, hold on, do I have anything here? I have scissors that may be a bit dangerous. Oh, there it is. Oh, but I did break the packaging. Oh no, I didn't. I heard a crack, so I was like, did I break it? <laughs> but I didn't. This is really pretty, but it's again something I still have to put on my face. Like I've put it on my face like once, just to try it out. And this, I don't think it's my favorite necessarily. So I'm not sure if I still need to review this because I feel it's just not that unique. And I don't think I would have purchased this with my own money. If I hadn't gotten this in PR, I don't think I'd have had this. So not sure I need to keep that one around. And then my two OGs, my e.l.f. and my sleek face form palette. These are quite similar in terms of what they can do. Um, but the difference between them is that the e.l.f. has a contour and not just a bronzer. So this only has the bronzer. These are my favorite, like all time go-to travel palettes. So. I have the Face Form in Light from Sleek. And this is what they look like if you swatch it out. Or is it in Fair? I think it's actually in Fair. So this is like perfect for me <laughs> like to travel with. Oh, it's in Fair, not in Light. I'm not sure if they still do these. Um, but yeah, that that's those swatches right there. And then the Elf one. That's right there. And there we have that one contour shade. So yeah, maybe, I mean, the e.l.f. I haven't used in a while. I find that because this is a bit like squ more square shaped, it doesn't fit into my makeup bag as perfectly as a sleek. So I tend to use that. And I'm not really into contouring anymore. So the question is, do I need to keep both of them or should I declutter one by now?
right? I think you can see all of my cream blushes laid out, and this is definitely an area where I've expanded the most, I think, of everything I have. Um, I've tried to group a couple of things together that I feel are similar-ish, but I feel I don't have that much overlap in terms of, like, colorful shades in my uh, cream blushes, but of course creams do not last as long um, as a powder blush. When I get to the declutter, I'm gonna have to narrow this down just because of the expiration date on some of these, and I'd rather keep, like, the, the couple that I really, really love and adore and get rid of the superfluous things. So the only thing I think where you can see some overlap is these this category here. So the Juicy Pangs and the M Cosmetics because I feel they're dupes for one another. So maybe I should organize it like this. So it's not a full one-on-one -on -one dupe kind of situation, but let me organize this really quickly. And then this nudie shade. So you, you can see that in this like more nude category, the M Cosmetics is far more warm tone than the Juicy Pang ones. These are a K-Beauty brand, by the way. They're Apieux, that's the brand name. And their Juicy Peng blushes are some of my favorites. They're very affordable, especially compared to the M Cosmetics ones. And I believe the M Cosmetics ones, the ones I have still have the dropper style packaging. Um, they now have re or like repackaged these and it now comes in much more manageable packaging because these are a bit of a faff to use. But yeah, I feel that these, those are straight up dupes. I know I've put this in a full face of dupes video and these are identical. Um, but here we get some differences, but let me show you that. So this is Venetian Rose, which is actually one of my favorite shades. This is such a pretty neutral shade. And this is, this is what I mean with, it's a bit of a faff to use because sometimes the droppers work and sometimes not. And you never know when you take these out, whether it's actually going to happen or not. But yeah, this is Venetian Rose. Which, I mean, look at like one drop and this is how much you get. So this is all you need. And sometimes you don't just get the one drop from these. You get a bit more. Oh, well. <laughs> and then we have, oh, what shade is this? I think this is the Guava shade. No, this is Raspberry. This is Guava. This is Raspberry from the Juicy Pang. And this is just, this is more cool toned. But yeah, in terms of like liquid blush formula, these are identical. Or just as glowy like this shears out perhaps a little bit more beautifully even so those are very different and actually no no look at it aren't these like the same so maybe i should give these a side by side swatch just for the comparison so maybe i don't need to keep both in the end when it gets to the time where i need to declutter um so the Rare Beauty Liquid Blushes are some of my favorites as well, but especially this shade, which is Grace, is a little bit more difficult to use than this one, but I think this needs to be compared to that. <laughs> just, just, you know, I think so. Uh, so yeah, Grace perhaps has a little bit more pigment to it than the Juicy Pang one, um, but I feel that despite that sort of, sh like the Juicy Pang is just a bit more sheer, but the shades are pretty much identical, I feel. Right, I hope the camera angle didn't shift too much, but I noticed that my bot battery was running low and my memory card was almost full, so I did a quick change around so we can just keep going with these blushes. Um, so let me swatch these three together because I think, again, they may be pretty similar-ish. So this is Hope from Rare Beauty. And here we have... Ooh. This is Rose Milk from M Cosmetics. Oh, see what that's what I mean like sometimes these just don't work oops and there we have rose milk Ooh, that's far peachier do you see that it's a lot warmer and then this is the shade guava from the juicy pang line which is not a very popular shade it seems but it's very pretty oh that's a lot lighter so these three look very similar in the bottles but are they? Let me shear them out a little bit so we can see. Ooh, very different shades. Hmm. And then we have, this is Cherry Splash. And I believe this is also called like Cherry something from the 
just cherry, I believe, from the Juicy Pang line, but it's a li it's a lighter shade. Like it's not as red. Now that I'm putting them side by side, it's probably because these bottles are frosted that it looks differently than when you apply it. Ooh, this is a little less intense, it seems, probably because it's such an intense shade. Yeah, do you just see that the, the shade like difference is very minimal here? And then we have Pink Nectar. This is really pretty in the springtime. And this is Strawberry. these are pretty much the same. So let me just continue with like sticks and liquids. Um, so I have uh, these two here. So this is the sticks that I have. The M Cosmetics So Soft Blush in the shade uh, Pinch. No, Lychee. This is a really pretty like peachy tone. Not sure I love that shade, but I haven't reviewed this yet. So not sure it's time to get rid of that just yet. So here we have Victoria Beckham's mini skirt. And I was a bit surprised with how patchy this was on me. So especially for how expensive this is. Um, I mean, it's pretty, but it's quite a sticky formula. So I'm not sure. I'm definitely going to have to try this more. This is very creamy, the M Cosmetics one. And then my Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Storm. Out of all of the cloud paints, this was the only one that really appealed to me in the end. Um, because this shade, even though it's geared towards deeper skin tones for sure, like they don't recommend this for fair skin. I felt it was the only thing they really did with a cooler undertone. And as you can see, I've got quite a lot of warmth already. And this is just such a pretty like berry shade. Again, you just need a very light hand with this. But then it looks really pretty in like the fall winter season. It's really one of those colors. I just have my beauty light ones. I now also own peach gasm. I used to own pink gasm already. Uh, so this is what pink gasm looks like, which is really pretty, but it's definitely a blush for me. And peach gasm is pretty as well. Let me see. This is, this is not as loaded up with product because I haven't used it that much yet. It's what I, like these go flat so quickly, making you think that you don't get a lot of product in these, but they do come with 12 milliliters of product. I don't get it. Oh, there we go. And there's the pink gasm or the peach gasm. And I have told you that I would try to compare this to this from Catrice. But now that I see this pink gasm shade, I can tell you that this is definitely more of a highlighter. Do you see that the Cruella one is definitely more sheer compared to Peach Gasm. So for me, this is definitely going to be more of a blush than this is. And now we just have all the potted creamy things left. So I have found with blushes that I do like a more intense shade. So something like this, which looks like it's not going to work for me, actually does work. This is by I'm Uni, which is a K-beauty brand. This is in the shade Plum. This is really pretty on. And that's where, that's what that shade looks like. Um, and also something like this, the Fenty Beauty Cream Blush Cheeks Out Cream Blush is really pretty as well on my complexion, like this more vibrant corally shade. This is stunning. But... I feel that the Fenty Beauty is perhaps too similar to the Tower 28 and the Tower 28 products tend to expire real quickly because it's clean beauty. This also feels really sticky. I don't remember it feeling this sticky the last time I swatched it. So there we have the Tower 28, which is far more intense, but that's because it's so sticky and I prefer the Fenty Beauty one because it's got more pink to it. This is a bit more orange tones. So formula-wise, the Milani Cheek Kiss one is actually very similar to the Tower 28, but this stays feeling nice. And I decluttered it yeah, last year, but then I took it out because it's like, oh, I love this formula. But this is just not the kind of shade I go for in a cream potted blush like this. So I now know pretty sure that I'm going to get rid at least of the Milani one. And I just mentioned how I like intense cream blushes, but these by LYS are a little too much. So this is Passion, yes. 
and this is self love and the this is a this brand is just aimed at deeper skin tones than mine so that's probably why i feel these aren't perfect i think the undertones of this just aren't quite right for me personally um even though the shades are really pretty um i just think i have other cream blushes in my collection that i like better that give me a similar look. So the LYS ones are really stunning uh, cream blushes, but more geared towards like medium to deep skin rather than my super fair skin. And I feel these are just a little bit too intense. And then these are some like lighter, brighter shades. This Rituel de Fil, uh, this is like a sample I got in a gift bag. It's like a cheek and lip product, I believe. I've only put it on once and I thought it was a little bit tacky. So, but this is a pretty shade, but I'm pretty sure that's something here, either the Charlotte Tilbury or the uh, Holika Holika one are a similar look. So this is the Putty, uh, the Putty Blush from Holika Holika, the Jelly Dough. Yeah, it's like a putty texture. So you can just see it's, it's a bit lighter, perhaps a bit, a bit more peachy. And then the Charlotte Tilbury, this is the Pillow Talks Cheap lip and cheek glow in the shade color of dreams and i think i'd keep the charlotte one over maybe both of these even when the when the time comes this is a bit more brown i like that i like that isn't it similar to mini skirt let me let me swatch this next to it oh no that's even more brown toned and you may be shocked to know that I don't have that many mauve tone cream blushes, and that's mainly because I have just one, which I find perfect. This is by Giorgio Armani. This is the Neo Nude uh, Melting Color Balm in the shade 50. And this is really interesting. It's in my shop, my stash as we speak. And this is a really pretty cool tone mauve with a bit of a gray running through it almost. Like this is so stunning against my skin tone. And then we just have this rare beauty thing left here. This is the nearly no, uh, nearly rose one. And this is my favorite one of these shades here. Um, but again, it may be similar to the Fenty, but I believe this is more pink. Like, oh yeah, this is definitely more orange. I can already tell just from looking at it in the pan. This is pink and that's coral. So this is another reason why I can probably get rid of the Tower 28, because do I really need like two essentially corally cream blushes and there's the rare beauty and then we have melt this is one of their uh bl cream blush lights in the shade honey thief and this is like one of the very few true true peachy shades i have in my cream collection and this is really pretty on i love a peachy blush on myself finally color pop super shock blushes um this is the magic moon one from the tinkerbell collection and this is a stunning shade, but it's not for me. It's far too orange once it goes onto my cheeks. Um, so while I like this, and I especially like it if it's topped with this, this is the shade Chiffon. Um, so this is Chiffon by itself. That's really, really pretty. Um, but if you top it over Magic Moon, it really gives a different quality to Magic Moon. And Chiffon has this, like, stronger pinky flash. Um, it's definitely not a highlighter for me. It's too intense for that, like, color-wise, but it is a pretty blush topper. And finally, two, uh, and finally, two ColourPop Super Shocks from the, um, what's this called again? Wine and Only collection. Um, Cheerio. Oops. Dropping things and Cruel Intentions. Now I like the shade of Cruel Intentions better, but that is a matte and I have found that the creamy or the Super Shocks blushes are better if they have a shimmer for me. And I like them better, but this is a bit too intense perhaps. But then again, I like that intense blush shade. So this is the shade Cruel Intentions and it's this perfect rosy tone. And then this is the shade Cheerio. I think they still sell these um, and these are really pretty. So now I'm going to grab all of my powder blushes and group them into their color families so I can show you those.
So let's start here, which is the warm rosy shades. These are all of my mauve blushes, which we're gonna save till the end. So I'm gonna keep them in frame because if I'm going to put them anywhere else, they're gonna fall off the desk, which I don't want. So they're gonna be in frame for a while. <laughs> but this this is the main the main star of the show right now. So the Bare Minerals Blonzer. I really like this. That's why I'm wearing short sleeve today, so I can actually like compare a few in a row. Probably doesn't work on the back of my hand, plus this is now very stained. Um, so yeah, this is the Blonzer in uh, Kiss of Pink. So this is Willa, and in the pen it looks like it's going to be like one of those like warmer rosy tones, but when I swatch it, yeah, it's perhaps a bit more mauve than a true like warm pink. And then I have this Kiko one. This is from their holiday collection, the Joyful Holiday in Elegant Rose. This is really pretty. I don't normally go for shades like this. Like it's just not my cup of tea per se. I think it may be similar. Oh yeah, it's very similar to these. So again, do I need to keep all of these? Probably not. And then this is more of like a true pink, but I don't have any others like this I feel. Um, this is by Zichi. This is their Pellis Identity Blush in the shade 01 Orchid. This does have a name on it. I'm not sure you can see, but it had a bit of overspray, which is a bit of a shame. But now that it doesn't have that anymore, let me see how this swatches. I think this is a bit more vibrant. Yeah. Oh, this perhaps should have gone with those. Um, because over here I've got like my corally shade. So maybe I should go into those next and show you those. So these are my four like warm pink sort of shades. Do I need all, all of these? Definitely not. So that, there, we need to get rid of those, uh, some of those at, at least. So this is one of my favorites from this sort of entire lineup. This is the Cheek Lover Oil Infused Blush from Catrice. And this is in the shade Blooming Hibiscus. And this looks, oh, let me show you what I mean. So this looks really warm toned in the pan, but this actually has a bit of a, well, more cool tone flash to it. I hope it shows up in the swatch here. So it doesn't look as warm because it's quite soft and pretty once you apply it. So I don't really get that sheen here. Hold on, maybe if I swatch it here, I can show you a little bit more what the shine is like on this. Do you just see that it's it's got this very sort of high shine, sort of almost like more cool tone flash? I don't think it shows up. And then I think that Catrice one is actually quite similar to the Natasha Denona Duo Glow in the shade Ryo. I don't think they still do this, but this is really pretty. And sort of in my brain, they kind of do the same thing. So here we have the Natasha. Ooh, that's very different. It's far more vibrant and a lighter pink. So this is where the Natasha Denona is. So you can just see that it, it barely shows up on my skin here, but it's really pretty on. And then one of my OG favorites, Benefits Coralista. And now that it, like, of course this entire line was discontinued, they no longer do this shade. As you can see, I've hit pan on this. I mean, oh, this is also very dry. <laughs> um, but this is perhaps more similar to these. Yeah, by now Coralista isn't that special anymore. And especially because I have that Catrice one and like these couple of shades, I think that Coralista may be on its way out. But And finally, the third date blush from The Balm. This is in that new ecological packaging that they have, which I don't like, which is why I don't reach for it, because this is just a bit too much of a faff to use. And it's dark. <laughs> like this is quite a deep color. But I love the Balm blushes, like they're some of my favorites, but a lot of the formulas I used to love have been discontinued and I wear them from time to time, but I just don't reach for them as much as I should. So that's like, this all looks the same. <laughs> like there are nuanced differences, like the Natasha Denona and the Zishi ones definitely stand out. But the other six, I think, you, or seven, you could use whichever one you like and it will look the same. Um, so now we have a bit more space. So these are my purple blushes. Yes, I have purple blush. Um, so this is quite possibly the most intense one. This is the Urban Decay Bittersweet Blush. 
I wish Urban Decay replaced this line when they discontinued it. It's, it's the time where I feel, you know, Urban Decay went down the drain is when they decided to discontinue, discontinue an entire line of blushes and not return with a blush ever since. Uh, why am I putting it here? I want to put it here. So that's what Bittersweet looks like. But then I also have these lighter things. So I have the uh, lovely cookie blusher in the shade Lavender Lemon Macaron from Etude House. These look so cute with the little puff. And this is more like a very soft pinky shade, but it definitely has this like lilac quality to it, especially on my more cool undertone that definitely shows up. So I think of this as a purple blush. You can't really see it. It's so light that it barely shows up, but that's good for my complexion, especially in the winter time. And then I have the Melt Blush Light, yes, in Electra. This was on sale last year for Black Friday and I decided why not? And this is so pretty over the Urban Decay one. So I tend to use those in tandem. And this is a true like soft lavender shade. I'm not sure if you can see, again, very light. And this one has a little bit of a shine to it. It's a very soft formula. And let me just show you here on the tail end of that Urban Decay blush. Like, do you just see how it tones down the Urban Decay one and just elevates it a little bit? So I love combining the two. And then this is one of my newest acquisitions. This was in my January haul. This is the Pat McGrath Labs Divine Duo blush in Venetian Sunrise. And someone said, oh, I wanna see what that looks like when you swatch it. So it's got the purpley-ness on one side and then this peachy pink on the other. Let me see if I can do this on a clean finger because this is quite a light blush. And then you can see that compared to these, it's more of a vibrant pink than a true, true purple, I find. Well, maybe if I take more of that purple shade. Hold on. Eh. Like it's more pink than it is purple compared to these. Um, but you can make it look a bit more purple. So it's more like a cool tone pink. And I don't have too many of those actually in my collection, but compared to actual purple blush, it's not that purple. Um, and then I wanna go into my plum colors um, because I have true, true mauve shades and I have them a lot, but I also have some deeper things which I like to think of as plum shades. And I think it goes nicely with the purples, even though the, these are going to be warmer. I have the Hourglass Mood Exposure. Sometimes I put this with my mauves, sometimes I don't. Um, but this is definitely a bit more warm toned compared to what I've got going on here. So this is like a nude color compared to these. <laughs> and then this is Rapture from Urban Decay. This is like a deeper plummy shade. Like this is where you can see that it's got quite some purple running through it. Like. On my arm, it almost looks like a bruise, but I love this shade on the cheeks in the fall time. It's such a great plummy color. And also the Ciate blush in Matchmaker in my brain. It could be a warm pink, but in my brain it works like a plum on me. Like a warm plum. Eh, could have perhaps compared this to some of the warm pinks, for sure. And then I have this far more intense shade. This is the MAC Glow Play Blush in Rosie Does It. And there you have it. You can just see this has a lot more red running through it than any of these shades. And then I figured out that I have quite a lot of these like brighter pink shades now as well. So um, this is my OG, the Instain Blush in Lace from The Balm. Like these, I just love these. I still have this entire collection but I don't use them enough. So this may need a declutter, but I have a lot of these like OG of uh, the bomb blushes and bronzers in my makeup memories box because these were so good. And it's just a shame that they were discontinued really. And then a newer acquisition is the Kaleidos blush in Dreamwalk. This is the only one of these that I know the name of, <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, because these Kaleidos ones don't come with the name on the back, so I have to look it up. And I have all six of these, so bear with me as we go along. And you can just see that these are very different. 
So this is very intense, almost too intense for my skin tone. I'm not gonna lie. And then I have the Dior Rosy Glow one, which I just wanted to compare here to the Kaleidos because a lot of people think they're the same. But I feel that the Dior is a bit more blue toned even. It's lighter and it appears fresher. The Kaleidos one is very pretty on my skin tone too. And I feel both of these work better than the, uh, the Balm one. And finally, Max Dilly Dolly from a blossom, cherry blossom collection a few years ago. This is a bright pink, but it's got a gold flash. So this could almost be a highlighter for some people, but for me, this is like that shade, but then with a bit of glow. And then just because I have this rogue magenta blush, this is from MAC. This is an extra dimension blush in rosy cheeks. And I, it doesn't really fit anywhere else. So <laughs> I'm swatching it here. Cause it's like pink, red and purple at the same time. Speaking of reds, I now have quite a lot of red blush as well, which again, do I need all of these? Probably not. Again, an OG, the Urban Decay um, blush in the shade Bang. This is very orange. So this is now one where I'm like, maybe it's just time. Maybe it's just time. Oh, why am I swatching it here again? I need to put it here. <laughs> so there you have it. It's very orange. Um, and this is the Hourglass uh, Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Diffused Heat. And this is also an orange toned red, but this is lighter and therefore a little bit more wearable. So that's really pretty. It's sort of like borderline coral. This is the De Balm Instain Blush in this shade Toile. And here we go into a more pink tone direction with our blushes. And then a true pinky toned red, again, great for that just in from the cold look is Tarte's Amazonian Clay in the shade Natural Beauty. There's a reason why Tarte named this Natural Beauty, I'm sure. This is so stunning in the winter time. Mm, this is really pretty. And you can just tell, like we go from orange to pink, but they're all reds. And finally, I have the Kaleidos one and this, I don't know what the shade, na shade name is, but it came in the same set as the pink one. And this is definitely more like a brown toned red I didn't love this on me. Like this is a bit too warm toned compared to everything else. The final section of true like vibrant things, even though when we get to the peaches, there are some more vibrant things, but I have soft pinks, peaches and mobs left after this. So an OG favorite was this. This is Too Faced, How Deep Is Your Love? This is one of their Love Flush blushes and this is so old. It was always my favorite watermelon pinky shade. But now this one from Nabla is actually more perfect for me. Um, and this is just not as vibrant as I'd like it to be. Like, this is what it looks like. I probably keep one of these like Love Flush blushes in a makeup memories box just for the, for the memories. This is the skin glazing blush from Nabla in the shade Lola. And then you can just see that it's like, how deep is your love, but more intense. So I would go for that nowadays. This is the ambient uh, lighting uh, blush in Incandescent Electra. This is really pretty. And it's got a bit more glow to it. So I, this is one of the hourglass ones I bought when I wanted more glow from my blushes. And it's vibrant, but it's very soft, which is why I like it. And then I have this really vibrant orange. This is not my kind of shade from Kaleidos. Like this is just too orange for me. It doesn't work. If you have a warm undertone, that's stunning. And then I have my favorite MAC Glow Play blush in the shade Heat Index. And this is uh, perhaps too similar to, uh, let me swatch that next to it in a minute, but this is such a pretty shade. And this is like a cream to powder, so I keep it with my powders, but I think I need to swatch this guy next to it for a minute. Because I'm sort of thinking, keep on this one as well. And these may be too similar. Oh, the Fenty one is more pink. Okay, so they're the same yet different at the same time. Um, so this is nudes and light pinks. Um, yes, that's right, because this is this is just straight up brown. So <laughs> this Galitos one. So I'm not sure this is one I need to keep around per se. Uh, let me start with that. Um, cause it's also a little yellow. This is a bronzer for me. 
Like, if I want to keep this as a bronzer, I could probably make it work better. And then this is Tawny Peach from H&M. And this is another one where I'm like, I, I used to love this. This is how I fell in love with nude and mauve tone blushes. But I haven't used this in so long. It still feels very nice. But, yeah. it's It's got a bit more warmth. And it is still very pretty, though. But I just don't wear it. I never reach for it anymore. If I were to reach for that kind of shade, I would go for this. This is Baroque from M Cosmetics. And it's sort of like that tawny peach shade, but then with glow. It's got that brown sort of undertone to it. It's like if you mix those two and you add a bit of shine. So I would probably go for that now rather than this. And then this is also more like nude leaning. This is the uh, or No Ordinary Love. This is when Too Faced brought this line back, but I feel the formula of this is just completely different. And this is veering toward like a soft pink. You can just see the difference there, how much lighter the Too Faced is. I mean, it's pretty, but I don't reach for it for that reason. One of my favorite light pinks of all time, the Instain Blush in Argyle. And this is one of the reasons why I have always wanted to complete the set because this was a shade I was just lusting after. But now that I have it, I really don't wear it enough, but it's such a good blue tone pink, but without it being that sort of like Dior rosy glow kind of vibe. So if I keep one of the in-stain blushes in my collection, it should probably be this one. And then this is another like very soft nudie blush, the Bomb Beach blush. Is this just a blush? Yes. This is just a blush and this perhaps goes better with these like nudie shades but this is another one that i just i never think about owning this even and i have the other blushes that came in this line in my makeup memories box so i'll probably won't get rid of it completely but you can just see it's a bit more pink compared to these things and then i have this re-ray blush this is their triple blusher this is another k beauty blush and this is really pretty in terms of like nudie pinks but it's perhaps a bit peachy leaning for a pink for me. These are my peach tone blushes and I just have way too many. I definitely don't need to keep all of these. The Kaleidos one, are you ready? Are you ready? I don't think my camera is going to pick up on this. This is like neon orange. It's so vibrant and I like this. I mean, in terms of like a shade from this Kaleidos line, save for like the more pinky shade that I already showed you. This is quite possibly one of the better ones for a cooler skin tone. Everything else had quite a bit of warmth, um, but this, I just need to show you this a bit better because it's so light and I'm light, so you can't really see it. But I hope that this kind of shows you what that does. It's a really nice pinky, pinky peach, but I don't, I should just put this on my cheeks more and it's more of a spring shade for me when I wear peaches. So I haven't really gotten a chance to wear this yet. Um, so I hope to just put it in a shop my stash. I don't think I'd be ready to get rid of this one just yet. Let me just open it all up. That would be fun. I mean, why do I have six glowy peachy blushes? And this is so old as well. And you can tell how much I've used this Catrice one. Like, this is absolutely destroyed. Um, this is their, uh, glowing and multicolor blush box in the shade Dolce Vita. This, I may just have to call it quits on this one just because of how it looks. Like, look at that. It's absolutely a destroyed. Like, what, what did I do to this? I mean, I remember loving it. Ah, oh, that's so pretty though. It's a very soft peach. Like, this is the kind of peach I do wear. This is perhaps too vibrant. Not too sure. And I feel it's quite similar to the Benefit one. So I probably don't need to keep both. Um, but the Benefit one may have more glow. Ooh, it's lighter. Ooh. But yeah, I like both of these for similar reasons. Oh, now in the viewfinder, I feel they look quite similar. In real life, the, the Benefit one looks a lot lighter than the Catrice one. And then I feel these two are the same. This is the Dumbo limited edition from the Disney Classics line that Essence did with Catrice in the spring of 2022. And this is their blush lighter in the shade Dawn, Peachy Dawn. And in my brain, these are the same. So I wanted to swatch these side by side just to see whether I'm right because I probably don't need to keep both. So here's the blush lighter and that's the Dumbo one. 
Ooh. Yeah. I think that the Dumbo one is actually more similar to the to the Catrice. Hmm. But the Dumbo one is very pretty. But then I feel that the blush lighter one is very similar to the Benefit. So I definitely need to take some choices in this like glowy peach blush category once we get to round to it. But yeah, too many similar things. And then we get like ultimate high shine. This one from Melt and Buskill. Oh. And this is far more orange than anything else I have. Like it's almost coral, but so pretty. Like if I were to go for an orange tone blush, it would be this one. And then I have this Sweethearts blusher in the shade Peach Beach from Too Faced. This is so old and it's quite pinky compared to everything else we've got going on here. Um, so this is one, again, makeup for, for a makeup memories box, just to keep it around for that nostalgia re reason, but not something I need to keep in my active collection. And then I have this one from M Cosmetics in the shade Magic Hour. This is so pretty. Yeah. Don't remember what this one was. It's very similar to the Dumbo one. <laughs> it's like very similar to that, like this. That's the Dumbo one. But yeah, this is very pretty too. So if I were to keep like two or three of these, I think I'd be happy. I don't need to keep all of these. These are my mauve tone blushes. I know it's ridiculous. Um, I definitely need to cut this in half, if not more. Um, because I really only tend to reach for like the same ones. My favorite one, Pat McGrath Divine Blush in the shade Divine Rose. I mean, this is like my perfect mauve tone blush. It's warm, but also pink and cool at the same time. Like for my neutral, more neutral like undertone, this is perfect. I also have some more cool toned uh, mauves uh, for sure. But this, this is my kind of blush shade. So yeah, this is my blush shade for sure. So that's why this is the be all and end all of everything. So anything that's similar to this needs to go. And I'm pretty sure that this KVD Beauty one is very similar to it. It's in the shade Fox Glove. Um, it may just be a little bit softer. This is a stunning formula. It's such a great formula, but I, I just don't reach for this. Um, oh, it's a bit more brown. Hmm. A bit more brown. And another one that I feel is deeper is the Pillow Talk Cheek to Cheek from Charlotte Tilbury. This I just want to love so badly, but this, it's just, I don't know. It's just not really my shade. And I, I keep wanting to love it and it's just, nah, it's far too warm toned for it to be a moth on me. Um, this is also quite deep, the Melt Raw Honey Digital Dust Blush. You can see how much I've used this one and I love it. So if I wanna go for that super glowy, this is almost like a bronze, but it's definitely different compared to anything else I have in terms of a mauve tone blush. Um, so those are okay. This I decluttered last year and I pulled it out cause it was like, I haven't re re even reviewed this yet. And I like this, it's the Kiko Mood Boost blush in Perfect Mauve. And this is a really stunning, more cool tone, mauve shade. I think you can still buy this, actually. And it's quite glowy, but it's very, very light. Um, and it does have a bit of a warm tone sparkle, I feel. So mm, not too perfect there. And then this is another more cool tone, mauve shade. This is from ColourPop, but it's not the shade that it says on the back it is. This is from the like Orchid You Not collection. It's something like Plush Something. Uh, and this is stunning, but I don't love the ColourPop pressed formula, I'm afraid. So even though this is like, in terms of like a cool tone mauve, one of the best shades I've ever found, this is just not my favorite formula. And I would reach for like some of these over that ColourPop shade any time of day. I also really love the lovely cookie blusher from a Tooth House in Ginger Honey Cookie. This is again, a little bit more warm toned, but this is such a stunning formula. And it's why I have that lavender macaron shade because I love this formula so much. And this is that like nudie blush that I love going for on like no makeup makeup days. 
So this is why I could potentially declutter some of those like nudie shades as well, because this is really stunning. Um, the Kiko one, they don't do this anymore. This is the Shade Fusion Trio blush in shade 05 Marsala. So this I love because you get swirl these shades together. And this is again, a little bit more cool toned, but it does have a little bit more depth than the ColourPop. So if I wanna go for that sort of shade, I go for the Kiko and not the ColourPop. Oh, they're very similar, swatched out. So can, can confirm that I would be keeping the Kiko over the ColourPop for sure. This is one of the newer uh, Catrice ones. This is the Air Blush Glow in Cloud Wine. Now, is this a plum? Is this, like, if you swirl all the shades together, I feel it's more mauve leaning, which is why I'm putting it here. Ooh, that definitely looks like something that we've got going on here. So again, maybe not something I need to keep around per se. I do like the Catrice blush formula, but I would keep that cheek glower, cheek lover one over this for sure. One I've kept around for such a long time, Seduce from Tarte. Still one of my favorite, like nude, but mauve blushes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Ah, oh, I love that thing. That's such a stunning shade. And I, I always uh, prefer that one over something like Exposed. This is the Cover Effects Blush Duo in Mojave Mauve. Is that, that's what it's called, right? Yes. And it comes with a matte and a glowy one. And I love this too. Um, I put it in a shop my stash. Oh, this this is far more pink and a little bit more cool tone as well. So I love that. So this swatch is all going all, all the way to the crook of my elbow. And I hope I can put this Dear Dahlia thing up here. This is their Blusher in Blossom Palace. And this is just really, really soft. This is more mauve and this is like a soft pink. Oh, I'm not putting this in frame, but this is a mauve. There, you can see the shade a bit better. And this is a very soft pinky shade. And I didn't love this, mainly because it's so small that my brush doesn't fit into here. So this is the Dear Dahlia. Yeah, so this is a bit too light for me almost. And I just don't love that this has visible sparkles. So I know that I can declutter this, but yeah, mauve tone blush is one of my favorites. So yeah, the ColourPop is perhaps the most cool tone thing I have here, but I definitely think the Kiko, and they sadly discontinued that shade. I also love this. This like Mojave mauve, mauve thing from Cover of X. Mm. Yeah, I've got, I've got my favorites, but now that I look at this, like, that foxglove shade. Like I was, in my brain, I was like, that's what I need to declutter. But if I look at everything, I mean, it's similar-ish to this one though. So it's too similar perhaps to Seduce. So, hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Luckily I don't need to take those decisions yet today. So yes, this massive blush collection is definitely due a declutter. I'm very well aware this is far too much product, but what I have finding myself do with a lot of my blushes is that I have shades that in my brain are just so perfect for me. And even if they are older, I tend to hang on to them because I like them so much. But then I do need to ask, start asking myself right now, I feel, should I still keep those just because I love them? Or should I just, because I have so many similar things that maybe I should just move on to the new stuff I have in my collection and just create more overview. So I think that by the time I declutter, I just need to set myself a goal of decluttering at least half, especially in some of the color categories where I have so many. Um, I really don't need 12 mauve tone blushes. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. So yes, uh, when we declutter, um, we're gonna take all of the tough decisions. Let me know in a comment down below what your decisions would be. And stay tuned because I have one more of these videos left, which is going to be lipsticks, where I'm gonna tackle it in a similar vein, where all of my bullet lipsticks I will be swatching out for you like this where we're really going to be comparing the different shades. So I hope those comparative swatches were useful for you. Uh, thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week. And if you'd like to stay tuned for whenever I start posting those decluttering series, it may be helpful if you subscribe to the channel. So thank you so very much for being here and I hope you have a great day. Take care, bye-bye.